initially I was in shock, you know, and uh, so I got up, I put on some clothes, and I drove over to Omar's house, and that's really when it kind of hit me, because I seen about 12 cars parked out front, you know, a whole lot of my friends, they were all out in the front, and uh, everybody was weeping, you know, everybody was in shock, and everybody was crying, it was just something that was building up within me, you know, anger, rage, sorrow, grief, you know, of, of losing somebody like that, you know, and, and then seeing the sorrow in his mother's face and his, his father and his little sister. When I seen him, it just, I just reacted. I mean, who, who in their right mind would ever, you know, just jump out of a car in the two busiest streets in downtown Fort Worth and shoot somebody in broad noon daylight, you know, with witnesses everywhere. You know, nobody in their, their right mind would ever do that. And I wasn't thinking, I just, I just reacted. When he looked back and he seen me, and he just kind of smiled. And the way I received that was like he was smiling. He was thinking, you know, that it was, it was a joke for what he did to Omar. And so I just reacted. I remember doing it, but all I could, all I could remember was like everything was blacked out. You know, all I could see was him and I could see me. And, you know, and I, I just chased him down and, and uh, shot him down. My age was never a factor in my trial, never. Most of the stuff that was even said in my trial, I didn't even understand. When I came to prison, I, they did an education awareness test on me, and I had a sixth grade education. And I guess I had that ADD or something. I couldn't, I couldn't focus on anything. You know, if it, if it wasn't the females or parties, I, don't, <laughs> I, <wouldn't, laughs> I couldn't focus. Every human being has the capacity for violence if you put them in the right situation. We all have the capacity for that. And we all make mistakes in life. There isn't a human being walking the face of this earth that hasn't made mistakes in his life. Yeah, I was blown away. I mean, you know, I, I don't dispute whatsoever. I, I tried to take his life. You know, in the heat of the moment, the, the, the rage that was running through me, you know, I, I definitely try to take his life and for him to turn around and, and show forgiveness like that and, and, and really understand knowing he knew that it wasn't gang related. And uh, just to see that letter like that, it was, it was, uh, it was appreciated. And it took many years for me to finally forgive and just move on. Of course it's wrong to shoot somebody, but you know, he was just, you know, I understand he was grieving for his friend. And, you know, and like I said, we were young, you know, we think a little different then, you know, like tooth for a tooth or, you know, whatever, you know, like, you know, but, you know, I, you know, I used to, even just after a couple of years in here, I used to tell my family, you know, that I wouldn't wish, to, wish this place on my worst enemy, you know what I mean? And uh, I never really considered him an enemy. Even after it happened, I didn't consider him an enemy, but, you know, you would think that if I did have an enemy, that he would be the one, right? And, you know, I wouldn't even, and, I don't, I don't wish this place on nobody.